Thanks very much for that kind introduction, especially the part about me having life's work, a life, whatever, <laughs> something like that. Um, okay, so today we're going to be talking about um, altruistic surrogacy. And I'm going to begin by discussing a little bit about surrogacy in general. So what is surrogacy? Surrogacy always involves the gestation um, of a child by a woman who, by agreement, is not going to raise the child. In the original prototype case, an infertile couple, the commissioning couple, that's the traditional one, uh, or a single male hires a surrogate who is impregnated with the, with the male sperm, either the single male or the male of the couple, and uh, the surrogate donates the egg. Um, then we have straightforward gestational surrogacy where the surrogate is just gestating the baby. It is not her egg. Uh, either the embryo is given to her by a couple. Um, in the simplest case, a commissioning couple hires a surrogate who is impregnated with their embryo. And now we have actually what's become more common, which is uh, multiple party um, surrogacy, where you have a commissioning couple um, and they often will buy an egg from one woman, a sperm from another man, put them together, and then implant them in, in a surrogate. So she's just gestating, not donating the egg. Um, and this move to multiple party was done to avoid some of the um, serious objections to traditional surrogacy, which is that it's like baby selling. And one of the things to think about is whether you know, this, it helps to make this move from traditional surrogacy to multiple party um, surrogacy. Now, when I ask students in my classes if they would agree to serve as a surrogate, most of them say no because they would get too attached uh, to a, as a traditional surrogate with their own egg. Uh, they would get too attached to the baby, and um, they would find it too difficult to go through the pregnancy process. But they, but they, many of them say that they would agree to do it for a friend. Um, you know, sort of the gift of life. Uh, <laughs> And those who wouldn't agree to do even altruistic surrogacy often fault themselves. And they think, well, you know, I'm just not nice enough to give this kind of a gift. You know, it's too big. It's too much to ask of me. But if I was a better person, then I would do it. So I'm going to talk a little bit about why there are s such commonly held strong objections to commercial surrogacy. So I'm going to discuss that first. And then I want to go on to talk about whether altruistic surrogacy suffers from some, some but not all, of the very same problems. So I'm going to start by talking about commercial surrogacy. And one of the problems with commercial surrogacy and one of the reasons that many people object to it is that it explo it's seen to exploit women. Uh, this is from an article on Slate magazine. It's a photo of women at a surrogate mother's home in India where they live during the, the time that they serve as surrogates. In a lot of these homes, they're not allowed to leave during that time period even to see their own children. Um, so the, the charge of exploitation is that the, basically when people have other things to do for money, for comparable money, they probably would not choose this form of work because it's difficult work and it's risky work and you don't get paid all that much for it. And so, you know, you end up with a problematic situation like this where we're outsourcing reproduction. You know, it's one thing to outsource our factories and now our, um, our customer service centers, but now to actually be outsourcing reproduction um, disturbs many people, and it has happened, and it is happening now, and uh, women in India now commonly serve as surrogates for American women. Um, people who are not persuaded by the argument of exploitation against commercial surrogacy uh, will say something like, it's paternalistic to tell women what they can and can't do for money. But of course, exploitation often involve, the charges of exploitation are about a person's vulnerable status. So it's not like they are in such full control of all their options that they could freely choose, oh, let me do this for money instead of, let's say, getting a job as a waitress or something else. Um, so this is one of the big problems with um, surrogacy. But of course, this is only a problem for paid surrogacy. Altruistic surrogacy will not have this problem because you're not paying anybody. So what are the problems with um, Another problem with commercial surrogacy, and this is considered to be one of the biggest problems, is that it seems like, at least in traditional form, uh, where the surrogate is also the egg donor, it just seems like straightforward baby selling. So 
What's wrong with that? What's wrong with baby selling? I believe that Maggie Simpson is worth 840 something dollars, although you can't see it. Um, so, and although, of course, it seems obvious to me and to many people about what's wrong with baby selling, um, sometimes people ask. So, uh, I'm going to spell it out. What's wrong with baby selling is that it treats a person like a thing. It's similar to slavery, except with better conditions. Um, and it's degrading to children. Elizabeth Anderson is very famous for arguing that it's degrading to children to treat them with market norms like things, like commodities, instead of by social and moral norms like people. So the baby selling argument has been countered by claiming that the money that's given to the surrogate is just for her gestational services. It's just for the, you know, for, for the uterus. The egg is a donation. So the argument goes, we're not selling a baby, we're just renting a uterus, and the baby is like a free gift with purchase. Um, and this has been a very common counter to the claim that surrogacy, traditional surrogacy, is baby selling. Um, and one of the problems with this counter argument that you're renting a uterus is that it just seems disingenuous, because what do you need a uterus for? I mean, there's no reason to rent a uterus unless you're getting a baby out of it. Um, unless there's a baby that comes with it, that's the product. That's what people want. That's what they're paying for. And so to say that you're just renting a uterus and the egg is sort of like a free gift that comes along with it, it just doesn't seem um, convincing because it, se because it seems like what the person wants, what the people who are paying want, what they're paying for is the product. They want a baby. They don't want use of a uterus for nine months. That's really not very useful to anybody. Um, so one question to think about, although this doesn't really concern altruistic surrogacy, is whether it helps that to avoid this problem, we now have the multiple party um, surrogacy system where people buy an egg separately, join it with sperm, homegrown or bought, and then implant it in a third party uterus. Is that um, therefore not degrading to the baby, or is it maybe even more degrading to be treated as something made from spare parts like this that are bought and then produced, um, especially when you think that uh, you know, a person's DNA and the egg and the sperm from which they grow make up a lot of who they come to be and their personhood. Um, okay, so that's, these are some of the problems with commercial surrogacy and some of the reasons why, uh, even though it's still um, accepted by a lot of people, it is banned in most countries, um, commercial surrogacy, and and most philosophers think that there are lots of problems with it that are not that can't be overcome. So, what about altruistic surrogacy? You know, what could be wrong with that? Hugs all around, right? Uh, everybody's happy. What could be wrong? Um, you're not selling anything. You're giving the gift of a baby to a well-intentioned person who wants to, and in all likelihood will, um, lovingly and competently raise the baby. So what's the problem? Um, the problem is that if commercial surrogacy is wrong because it treats a person like a thing, it seems like altruistic surrogacy is wrong for the same reason. It also treats a person like a thing uh, because you're giving it away and that you do that with things. You don't give people away, you give things away. So why is this not obvious? Well, I think it's not obvious because altruistic surrogacy seems analogous to a few other practices that seem objectionable when they're done for money, but commendable when they're done for altruistic reasons. And I think that's why people think, oh, it's just like selling a kidney or it's just like adoption, and they don't therefore think that altruistic surrogacy is problematic. So I want to take a look at some of these anal and so-called analogous practices to see whether the analogy really holds up. So we can start with um, organ donation, particularly kidney donation, because that's very common. Many people die each year waiting for a kidney donor. And even, even uh, this is, you know, a widespread problem. And even though that's true, the sale of kidneys is generally banned. And why is that? You need money. I need a kidney. You don't need two kidneys. Why can't we make a deal? Why is that problematic? Uh, and some people argue, again, that we should, as competent adults, be able to make this choice, and we should be able to contract for spare parts. But the opportunity for exploitation is so distasteful, and, and the results are so awful and predictable, that kidney sales are banned anyway. And one thing we can consider is that if kidneys can be sold, you know, 
basically, again, everybody in the United States is going to have two kidneys, and everybody in Pakistan will have to have one. Um, also, as uh, Deborah Satt says in her book, uh, something about what should not be for sale, something like that, uh, in certain areas where the black market for kidneys is um, very strong, additional pressures are placed on debtors because creditors see the, debtor, the debtor's kidneys as collateral or as sources for income. So just having the choice to sell your kidney puts you in a position where somebody you owe money to will pressure you more for the money because they know you have a way to get this money. You can go and sell your kidney. And here is a... Um, here is a photo of donors in a slum in the Philippines with scars from their operations. And here are some women in southern India in this village named Kidney Village who are trading um, kidneys for cash. So when we ban kidney, the sale of kidneys and restrict organ donation to only those that are obtained as free gifts, it seems to do away with the problem. Right. So when we have kidney donors, we don't have this problematic situation. We have um, people doing uh, something kind for somebody else, usually somebody they care about, but not always. Sometimes people just do it um, to be generous, and you don't have the problems that you have with something like um, commercial kidney sales. So is this comparable to surrogacy? That's the, that's the reason why I'm mentioning kidney, don kidney donation versus kidney sale. Is it comparable to surrogacy where we don't approve of selling, of commercial surrogacy where you're selling the baby, but we can say that altruistic surrogacy is, is free of these problems? Um, I don't think that it is analogous, and the reason is that when we ban the sale of kidneys and we restrict organ donation to just donation, we protect the seller. So, and that's the person who's at risk when we have um, trade in kidneys, commercial trade. We protect the person who is selling the kidney. But the difference is that in surrogacy, we have a child that's born at the end of it. So, whereas kidneys themselves, which are the object of organ sale and organ donation, don't require or merit any respect you know, or protection or respect in their own right, children who are the object of surrogacy agreements do. And so the analogy, I think, between kidney sale and donation, you know, at, versus donation and baby sale versus donation breaks down in its most vital respect, which is respect for people. Uh, so you can give away a kidney, you can put a nice bow on it, but a person is not a kidney, so you shouldn't be treating it like a thing by giving it away. So that's one analogy. Another reason that people are accepting of altruistic surrogacy is because it's considered to be analogous to adoption. So we can ask whether surrogacy is analogous to adoption, right? If adoption is not morally problematic, then why would altruistic surrogacy be morally problematic? Aren't they very similar in both cases? Um, somebody, a, a child born to one person is given to another person to raise. And we accept that with adoption, so why don't we accept it in the case of surrogacy? And the analogy is seen to carry even further, because with adoption, again, we don't let people, we ban commercial adoption, we don't let people sell their babies, but we let them give them away. So the argument goes, why can't we say the same thing for surrogacy? We let people, we don't let people sell their babies as surrogates, but we let them give them away as um, altruistic surrogates. Uh, well... There are similarities. I don't think all of them work so well. In my own controversial view, neither adoption nor surrogacy are problem-free, but at least there's a critical disanalogy, which is that adoption is a post-fact solution to a needy child, uh, with, and you need somebody to raise this child. The child doesn't have adults ready and able to meet her needs, so we have to do something for this child, so we find other adults ready and able to meet her need. Um, but surrogacy is not like that. You don't start off with a child. You're not presented with this problem that you have to solve. Surrogacy is conception with the intent to relinquish. And so in order to make it analogous to adoption, it would be similar to like getting pregnant deliberately with the intent, for, with the intent of giving the child up for adoption, which I think would suffer the same problems. You might call it altruistic, you might call it very generous, but it's also treating a person like a thing. And so that's where I think the analogy between adoption and altruistic surrogacy breaks down. It breaks down in how the problems come to be. 
how the child comes to be. In an adoption case, again, you have a child that needs a place and needs a family to raise it, so we do the best we can for the child. But in an altruistic surrogacy case, you are conceiving the child with the express purpose of giving it to somebody else. And that's, again, giving something away, treating a person like a thing, which is not the way we uh, want to be treated ourselves, and it's not the way we normally think that we should treat people. OK, so this is pretty much the argument that we have commercial surrogacy, we have altruistic surrogacy, commercial surrogacy suffers from some problems, altruistic surrogacy suffers from similar problems in terms of treating a person like a thing. It's not thought to be this way because we have these analogies to organ donation and to adoption, which I th and I think those analogies break down. Um, there's one more objection, though, to deal with, which is that, you know, you can't give away what you don't own. Some people will argue that uh, since no one really owns another person, how can I be talking about giving someone away? It seems like I'm the one doing the commodifying. I'm the one treating a person like a thing when I say you're giving a person away. You don't own a person, so how can you give the person away, right? Um, and my response to that is that I think it's the person doing the giving away that is treating the person like a thing and not me. So here's an, an analogy to think about this. Uh, if I'm in an accident and I have amnesia, right, so I don't know um, that I'm married and I don't know who I'm married to. And you know, my husband's a little tired of me or not so attached and his friend is really lonely. Um, and so can he just give me to his friend um, and the old Henny Youngman joke, right? Take my wife, please, right? Uh, or would that be somehow disrespectful to me not treating me as a person because he's giving me away? And so um, I think that uh, the same thing applies to the question about altruistic surrogacy, that it's the person doing the giving away that's treating the person like a thing um, and not me making this argument against them doing that. So, uh, okay, so let's say we conclude that I'm so persuasive that you now think that altruistic surrogacy is very problematic. Um, what should we do about needy people, right? We have problems. What should infertile couples do? Well, I don't know. Not this. 